Okay, everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you follow me on Twitter, then you have already seen that I started and finished Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. This book was wild. So if you're interested in hearing my review of this debut novel, keep on watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe before we move any further. And let's get right into this. All right, so as soon as I closed this novel, I had to jot down all of my thoughts. I had so many. Queenie has been described as Bridget Jones Diary meets, uh, meets Americana. Americana is a novel by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. If you don't know her, she is the one that Beyonce sampled on Flawless. Just to be blunt, a few chapters into this book and I honestly didn't know if I was going to be able to finish it. So Queenie is written from the perspective of a Jamaican British girl in her 20s. I think she's around 25, 26 years old. It all begins as the main character Queenie is dealing with a break in her relationship. And an interesting thing about this book is it incorporates flashback and and I don't know if Candace Cardi Williams does a very good job at incorporating flashback into this because it seems very abrupt. It's not as well integrated into the actual novel, but it doesn't always flow really well. And as this is like a, a very fast paced read, um, I did finish it. I, I sat down and I read it one night, got through half the book started the next morning and finished it by like midday. Um, if you're not really paying very close attention, then you'll just be completely lost and you won't know if you're in the past or the present and you're just gonna be like, how do we get here? But the flashbacks, they do seem to disrupt the storyline rather than actually aiding in reader comprehension. So Queenie is repeatedly texting her boyfriend throughout the first couple of chapters of this book. Uh, she's at, she's begging, I'm not, I can't even say, asking she's begging him to come home for the first couple of chapters i thought something terrible had happened to her boyfriend and that's the reason that he wasn't texting her back um but after a few chapters we finally realize that queenie's boyfriend actually wants her to move out of their apartment and he is staying with his parents until she leaves and then also while her boyfriend is not texting back we actually find out that she has experienced a miscarriage. She takes several trips to the gynecologist and uh, with her aunt, and then we find out that she had a miscarriage. And so all of these, all of these events, they sort of lead Queenie down this rabbit hole of impulsive and dangerous situations. I've seen characters that are heartbroken. I've been heartbroken myself, but I've never actually seen a character allow heartbreak from a relationship that was so obviously toxic. They, her and Tom should have never been together. A relationship that was so obviously toxic caused them to completely self-destruct the way that Queenie has. Queenie not only has multiple, and when I say multiple, I mean multiple, unprotected hookups, like back to back to back with men she barely knows anything about, loses her job, and is accused of sexually harassing a man that she was warned against even engaging with. That man is trash. There's, there's no real like excuse for him. Um, he's, he is complete trash. Um, but what I will say is Queenie is very naive um, in certain situations. Like she doesn't seem to she doesn't, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know if she really thinks things through. She seems to be naive, but at the same time, she does seem to be aware of how terrible all these decisions are. But to go back to the terrible decisions, she's accused of sexually harassing a man that she was warned, warned about on multiple occasions not to engage in a relationship with. And then she does this all while begging her ex to text her back. And like, the text message threads between her and I can't even call them threads because she's the only one responding to the messages. The text messages that she sends her ex-boyfriend are so cringy, so cringy. Queenie begins to experience panic attacks, um, like debilitating panic attacks, like, like she's riding the bus and about to pass out. She does pass out on multiple occasions. Um, while she, she makes these multiple visits to the clinic, she spends the first 100 pages of this book completely brushing off the idea of it of going to therapy this 
the therapy aspect of this novel is sort of where Candace Cardi Williams makes some of her best and worst points. So I applaud her for tackling how therapy and issues of mental health are very taboo across the African diaspora. And in this, we see Queenie's grandmother outright tell her that she cannot go to therapy. But her grandfather is the voice of reason that eventually pushes her towards accepting an appointment with a therapist. Queenie's therapist is good in certain areas. She gets her to finally talk more candidly about her upbringing and the trauma from watching her mother be in an abusive relationship with a man named Roy. Candace Cardi Williams states that all of the men in the story have three letter names to show how insignificant they are. But what really seems to be missing from these conversations with her therapist is tackling race um, and issues of race and all of the trauma and these situations that, that Queenie gets in that really you cannot remove the topic of race from. And we, we do see Queenie actually talk to her therapist for a little bit about how it feels to be a black woman dating and, um, and trying to like find sexual partners and even romantic partners. But um, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to go full circle and it never seems to be a very um, impactful conversation because I think that Queenie's therapist is white and this is why you need to see black mental health professionals if you are black because her therapist cannot relate to, to any of these issues that Queenie is going through. Race is something huge, clearly for, for Queenie. It only seems that once in this novel, Queenie actually says out loud to somebody that she is uh, actually afraid to be in a relationship with black men and that she actually is afraid of black men. Somewhere, Queenie needs to Queenie needs to talk to somebody about why she accepts this violent treatment from non-black men. Um, and if these violent encounters that she has with these men, though it is sexual and I, you know, I don't know if that's Queenie's kink or something, are these encounters consensual? Is she truly comfortable with what these men are doing to her body? And then the fact that every man that she sleeps with is either married or in a relationship themselves. Is this a lesson in the book? And none of these events seem to wrap up by the end of the book. And Queenie's relationship with her friends. The fact that she ends up dating or sleeping with so many of these men that are in relationships, all of this could be solved if she communicated with her friends. Let me know if your friends are are like this. You start talking to somebody, somebody even gives you their number, somebody, um, you know, you see somebody out at the club, you see somebody out at an event, and you even start just like having a simple conversation with them. By the time that conversation is over, you and your friends have their social media, you got their Instagram, their Twitter, you know what their middle name is, you know how many kids they have, what their mother's maiden name is. You have all of that information if you have good friends. Queenie never seems, Queenie and her friends never seem to have like these conversations where they're really actually investigating these men that she engages in a relationship with. Like the simple fact that she is like emailing back and forth with this man at her job and never finds out that he's married until like after the fact. Candace Cardi Williams also attempts to tackle topics like Black Lives Matter and Me Too. In these areas, it always feels forced. Queenie will randomly read a headline and then go on like a rant about injustice and then just as quickly as it is brought up, we'll move on to the next topic. Then she will attempt to pitch what feels like a 140 character thought that she plucked from her timeline to her boss and then instantly get turned down, rinse and repeat. Her wokeness does not feel like it extends beyond what she sees online. She does attend a protest once and <laughs> that it was very cringy. She briefly mentions the Me Too movement but never really interrogates her own sexual relationships in like a meaningful way. All of these experiences that she has while she is like struggling to write about 
Black Lives Matter at her job and like pitch these ideas, her own personal experiences, besides those that seem to deal with like what's going on in America, um, could have been blogged about and resonated with a wide audience. She basically describes gentrification every time she walks through her neighborhood. Another great topic she could write on, but it ends up being pushed to an afterthought. I, I just, I, I don't 100% know how I feel about this book. To wrap things up, Queenie is a novel that will definitely get people talking. And that is where I can say that it is successful. The writing is good, but the characters are all toxic as hell. From Queenie to her family to her friends, they're all toxic. The only person that is really redeemable in this book is her mother. I enjoyed her mother. And I think that that relationship, uh, it really could have played a bigger role in this book. And though it seems that Queenie does take a huge step in the direction towards healing and moving forward at the end, I'm not sure how much she really learns. But let me know your thoughts. I'm interested in what you have to say. What rating would you give Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. I'm thinking a solid six out of 10. But make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you in the next review. And remember, you are loved.